you know most movies actually begin with a story uh it's a story you feel like making this was a story this was a film which began actually thematically with a theme somehow abhijat and me always have been very uh, fascinated with our own existence who are we why are we here on this planet and uh, why were we brought here what is this concept of god what is religion so we had very strong views on the way we look at uh, god religion the story started with a theme and we said okay let's do something about this and let's put our views the way we see then to communicate uh, uh, whatever we wanted to say thematically we had to create a character through which through that character we could actually communicate whatever we wanted to and then came this sort of an alien that what if an alien was to really see at the human race and from his point of view we see our follies how we ended up creating our own religions and how everything is so many things are so man made so when this thought came suddenly it became an interesting story uh, uh, if we were to see all these things through a point of a normal human being it wouldn't have been as interesting so at some stage yes we felt that okay this could be a story we can tell see the alien we wanted him to look human we wanted him to look human we didn't want him, we don't didn't want a you know a creature with six hands and something he has to be a somebody who looks like us and he merges with our community but at the same time he should look slightly different so when you look closely you realize that he's like us but there's something something not right about him something which is different so all we had to do was do some very minimalistic work on his look all we did with the character was made his ears a little out and i used to curl his eyelashes so his eyes started looking slightly bigger than uh, uh, normal and he wouldn't blink in the film so without blinking what is to happen when you don't blink you have to make a very conscious effort to keep your eyes open so what you get on your face is a very curious look you're constantly like this so it gave a feeling that here somebody from outer space and who's trying to look at this world very curiously so his eyes were always you know like this so there were very subtle changes made to him to make him slightly different from uh, uh from the human race what we always try and attempt is that uh, whatever story you tell if you can say it in a funny way if you can say it with humor if you can interlace your film with humor it automatically becomes interesting so uh, all we wanted to show was that he when an alien lands he needs he comes naked from that planet and and he needs clothes he needs money so if i i can always say it straight that he okay he picked up clothes from somewhere i can always say that he found money from somewhere he can steal money but that's not interesting so the moment you i had i had to show from some place where he gets his clothes and money so the dancing car became a fun way of saying it that he's going and picking up his clothes and money from you know from people who are making love in a car so it just became a interesting way of narrating a story i have never attempted to uh, uh, barring this film where i was sure that this is a theme i want to communicate about most of my other films have never started with a social message if you look at munna bhai mbbs or if you look at three idiots clearly they didn't start with any social message is that while you're scripting it uh you tend to delve into your lives you tell it to del- tend to delve into your experiences and you what comes out is your beliefs if you're talking about three idiots our belief was that education in this country this the drastic change needed in education in a country uh because i grew up when i was growing up i was a very average student when i was uh, in my college and my school very average the moment i went to a film school i i started started doing extremely well i started getting a scholarship and then i realized be- because that was engaging me that something i enjoyed doing it so this is exactly what came out in the film that if you choose to do what you enjoy you will automatically excel if you automatically excel you will also succeed in the conventional way so these are things which we believed in they kind of tend to come into our films without uh, Uh, uh there's no conscious effort to say okay now let's make a let's find a subject and let's make a social comment over it no i think the way we have to look at film making we have to completely reinvent ourselves and uh, uh uh see people who are who've just started making films who've just educated themselves in making films now obviously are looking at films in a different way we started slightly earlier when visual effects were not as strong so i keep telling myself that i have to really now learn uh how we shoot we have to really learn that we don't need to really go and shoot uh, uh, the way we shot earlier you know we can have virtual sets we can have many things can be shot completely different you don't really need to go out and create and find those kind of locations 
Uh, I'm also learning, I would say. You know, every time I actually do a film, it's a process of learning. And whenever I work with somebody who really knows his job, like uh, Viral at Riva. So, it, it's a process of learning for me that, oh, why am I actually complicating my shoot? You know, I can actually shoot simply and all this can be achieved in post. So, for me, even this, that, that last scene, if you remember in the film, that whole scene, I, we initially toyed with it for many a days of how we are going to shoot it. How we are going to show real fire coming out of the compartment. We actually wanted to do it live but there were problems with how to get a compartment. Either you create a railway compartment then shoot it. That makes it you know, restrictive in terms of costs. How will the smoke come? How will the characters move through the smoke? Uh, there were many issues. Uh, we, wanted, we wanted you know, dust particles floating all over. The, and the moment you try to do it real it's very tough. Uh, but through this film, I learned that, uh, 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 you know, all this is possible, all this is possible. So when I actually go to the train sequence, I actually shot it in a day. The whole sequence was shot in one day. And all that you see has been created in post. The entire fire, all those dust particles in air, the smoke, uh, the sparks in that, the entire blast. All that has been completely created uh, uh, on machines. So. So all this was not possible earlier. Anything you wanted to achieve earlier was you had to do it real. But uh, so now I'm actually getting spoiled. I think I'm getting spoiled where I always, you know, now feel ah, this will handle in post. This will handle in post. So there are many things which should be which need the due, like script writing. Uh, uh, I think that's the foundation of a film. Similarly, editing I feel has never got its due. People don't, you know, a well-edited film, the credit can always be taken by the director saying, "Are you know, you know, he shot it well. What lovely shots and." A badly edited film, also the blame can go on to the director. So it's very difficult to judge how a film is really edited. There's no tangible way. A good camera work can't be judged. You know, good production design can be judged, but good editing cannot be judged. So it, it's never got its due. I think we need to uh, give it its proper due. And similarly, special effects, which is a new, uh, uh, relatively, uh, uh, I won't say new, but it's kind of emerging thing. I think filmmakers need to, I think directors and cinematographers need to educate themselves more in visual effects. I think we need to have more uh, uh, workshops where it becomes integral for the director, the cameraman and the visual effects team to come together to understand that what is possible, what is not possible, what are the elements needed to make it possible. We need to understand each other's uh, uh, way of working. So I, think, I think as an industry, for it to grow, I think directors need to really understand this version. But it's, it's, it's growing well and it makes a life easier. I think it makes a life easier. You can really imagine what you want. Now, you know, the, now the canvas is wide open. It's earlier you would, you would get limited. Will it be possible? You'll get into production things, you'll get into costing things. Now you imagine and it's possible to do it. I wanted the people to leave happily uh, with a smile on their face because uh, earlier the film was ending with Amir going away and the girl reading the bookshop that he left. So it was a very sad scene. So uh, I could have ended the film there, but I just wanted people to leave the theatres with a smile. So we brought that beginning cloud landing again, wrote a voiceover on it, which is a very funny voiceover. He describes how he sees the human race and uh, he has these four points about human beings. And when you suddenly, and the spaceship lands, you're expecting Amal to come out and instant Ranbir comes out, so you get an instant smile. And then he puts these little stickers on his face, which is in a way symbolic of how we need religion to protect us. And uh, it can, and and you leave, basically you leave with a smile on your face. You know, actually, you can never make a film for an audience. You have to make it for yourself, because the moment you start thinking you make it for an audience, which what is that audience? You know, what you like might be very different for what he likes. So how can you judge, how can you club everybody and say, oh, this is what, how can you think for somebody else? You have to do what you like to do. And uh, as I said, I've been lucky enough because my films worked right from the first film. So I've been lucky enough to experiment. If you actually look at all my films, uh, 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 in the conventional sense, they've been very risky films. Uh, which distributor would say, ah, I want a film like Lagero Mandavai, which is about Mahatma Gandhi. So he will say he'll want to back off here. Even this, which is talking about God, religion, and on the face of it, on paper, if anybody sees it, they'll say this is a very risky thing. There are no item songs, there are no action sequences, nobody flying in air and kicking people, you know. None of those things are happening. So commercially, they don't make sense. Uh, uh, 
but we've been fortunate that they worked commercially also so it gives us more strength to experiment on the next time no the journey has been uh, has been uh, uh, quite good i i feel very blessed in that sense that uh, uh, find myself very lucky that whatever i it took me some time to make my first film since i came to bombay it took me 15 years to make my first film i was doing a lot of other work i edited for many years i did a lot of advertising work but from the point from the day i started making my films i've been uh, fortunate that all the films uh, uh, not only we appreciated they also did well commercially so which gave me the strength to go and do whatever i wanted to do you could always experiment with new subjects and try something new every time you know i love animation very honestly speaking and uh, it's a thought which has crossed my mind many a times even after 3 days uh, i've met a lot of people that time and who told me that why don't you do an animation film and i actually ended up trying to i remember a few days i sat and saw a lot of animation films to understand the writing in animation and what i discovered the writing in animation is very different from the writing in uh, a regular everything is slightly you know uh, from what i understood it's gag driven sometimes it is little over and that writing so i was trying to understand how to write for an animation film at some stage i would love to if if, if i find a right team which can uh, uh, execute it i would uh, and if i get a right script or if i can i have so much to write i sometimes you know which should, which script should i because the moment you start writing you it kind of committing yourself to 2 years of work on that but if i get a good script if i get a good script uh, uh, i would love to love to do an animation film hi this is rajkumar hirani for any updates on animation and visual effects you can log on to animationexpress.com